then comes the two year region this is the two year region where we are blowing oxygen basically hot air blast hmm. or oxygen oxygenated hot air blast right this is called two year region and below the two year region that is called hot that means from here to here it is called earth this part right so the first part is stack or shaft then comes the bosch then comes the two year then comes the earth so what are the different uh, functions or what are the different things happening in different zone of the blast furnace i simply can say from here in this region then in the stack region basically indirect reduction occurs you have to remember indirect reduction that means carbon monoxide will react with iron ore and help in the reduction process hmm. basically hmm. basically hematite become magnetite and magnetite become oustite these things will happen basically right and also heating will also occur the temperature of the iron ore also get increased due to transfer of the heat see the car carbon monoxide forms here in the combustion zone at the two year reason combustion it is called combustion zone why because combustion is happening the hot air blast is coming and it is reacting with the carbon coke and it is forming carbon monoxide and that carbon monoxide is moving upward hmm. that is that is carrying chemical energy as well as thermal energy right thermal energy means heat it is carrying and it is carrying chemical energy means it will react with the iron ore right so at the stack reasons basically indirect reduction occurs and heat transfer also occurs these are the two things it is okay up to this yes sir, yes, sir. Th then comes the bosch region if you i told bosch region comes from here right lower stack from lower stack to up to two year it is bosch you have to remember in the bosch region what happens everything becomes liquid except coke coke is carbon and carbon have a melting point of 3600 degrees centigrade you can imagine very high melting point of carbon so it will never melt it will remain as solid only right but other things iron oxides that is fuo will melt right if some fe has formed it also get melt and if slag has also formed obviously slag will form you have to remember the slag also start forming at the top portion of this belly hmm. primary slag that is called primary slag primary slag is not, nothing but phyllite you have to remember feo dot sio2 that is called phyllite feo dot sio2 that means the iron oxide which is formed feo oustite that will react with silica sio2 the gang and become a low melt, melt, melting point substance called phyllite some people also call feo dot sio2 dot l2o3 that also you can say phyllite no problem right so you understood that means at the top portion of the bosch primary slag is forming and the iron oxide if you also get melted right but the coke remain as solid so that means coke is the only substance which provide permeability to the form uh, permeability to what permeability to the carbon monoxide which is forming here and moving upward and permeability to the molten metal and slag which is forming so that it can move towards the earth it is okay now yes sir yes sir any time you have confusion you can ask me no problem huh? then uh, stack is over bosch is over right then uh, you can see there is a dead man zone sometimes in exam they ask what is dead man zone so you you can draw this diagram and you can show this dead man zone is nothing but this part is dead man zone you can see this inverted u shape or v shape you can say dead man zone is the zone which is inverted u shape or v shape which is forming like this hmm. it is you can see it is horizontal initially and again become vertical upward hmm. it is basically dead man dead man means that zone is dead dead means there is no reaction at all that part do not take part in the reaction right so basic can you can anybody tell me what will be this these are iron oxide or these are coke so unburnt coke particles Very good. on Excellent. the metal these are unburnt coke why can anybody guess why these these remain unbur unburnt here why the coke here is not unburnt why the coke here is not unburnt but why the central column of coke is unburnt why so because of the co gas which is traveling upward so like uh, in that process it's going so on the central part it is all the unburnt coke are being deposited okay 
sir might have told you about the raceway or runway ha huh? you have to remember see this is raceway this is raceway and runway combustion zone you can see this is also raceway and runway so you can see this is a two year ha huh? this is a two year this is a pipe kind of thing ha huh? pipe this is also a pipe this is called two year and this is called bushel pipe so hot blast will come from the bushel pipe to the two year and it will go into the furnace here right so and and this region is a very large diameter you can understand very large diameter and lot of solid particles are present coke and i don't know right so what happens this this combustion zone which is forming or this flame ha huh? this flame which is forming cannot go deeper into the center you understand my point the combustion zone this is the combustion zone ha huh? this part is combustion zone this circular portion that cannot penetrate to the center of the furnace why because the diameter is very high blast furnace is a cross it is a circular cross section that means from every circle it is uh, a combustion zone is forming but that cannot penetrate up to the center so if the combustion zone cannot penetrate to the center what will happen there will be no combustion at all yes or no it is okay yes sir so that that particular center column column of the coke remain unburnt and they, that do not take part in the reaction at all so that is dead man right but the coke present over here will come and react with the oxygen easily and with the obviously with the combustion zone right so they will burn and become ash and finally go to the earth right so this is the dead man dead man zone is a inverted v shape or u shape zone forming here hmm. basically this is central column of coke because combustion zone cannot penetrate to the center that is that is why Huh. then okay fine uh, and also you can write what is two year zone two year zone is that zone where the hot blast enters hmm. simply you can write two year zone is that zone where the hot blast enter into the blast furnace and the oxygen present in the hot blast will react with the coke and it will form carbon monoxide that carbon monoxide will carry the heat and chemical energy to the top fine then then comes the hearth what is hearth hearth is a container just a container to store hot metal and slag both are in molten state slag is in molten state hot metal is in molten state so to store them hot is required basically you have to remember the reaction occurs from stack from this this portion the reaction starts from this portion up to two year major reaction occurs that's why there is a from here to here this height is called working height and that particular volume occupied is called working volume sometimes people ask what is working volume of blast furnace or working height of the blast furnace everybody understood or shall i repeat so got it right so working people ask what is working height of the blast furnace so simply you have to write working height is the distance from the top of the stack up to to here that height is called working height and that entire volume is called working volume why it is called working height and working volume you simply can say major reaction happens over there major reaction means what kind of major reaction you can 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 you tell me what are the major reaction will happen up to this from here to here obviously reduction will happen fe2o3 will become fe3o4 fe3o4 will reduce to feo and feo will reduce to fe right so all the major reactions is happening reduction reactions and if limestone you have provided or dolomite you have provided that will undergo calcination process right that is also important reaction it will give you lime and magnesium oxide right and other reaction is like uh, some direct reduction also occur feo will react with carbon to give you fe hmm. so and and combustion reaction huh? carbon react with oxygen to form carbon carbon monoxide because of high temperature available hmm. so the all the major reaction is happening over this region that means the blast furnace is working in this region mainly so that's why it is called working height and working volume but you have to remember in hearth certain reactions occurs the reactions occurs at the interface between the slag and metal right so you have to remember both slag and metal comes from the bosch region it go downwards and store in the hearth and after reaching to the hearth they get separate into two layers the top layer is will the slag layer and bottom layer is the hot metal layer can anyone tell me why 
slag moves to top and uh, the so because slag is uh, so a little bit density difference density difference yeah because of density difference slag is so light weight also hmm. because ah. so slag is the... nice. slag if 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 question will be there what is the composition of slag in the blast furnace slag what is the main composition what you can write anybody remember the definition of slag and uh, flux plus gang particles ha huh, that so is fine you but dot. obviously from that also you can say composition very good ha uh, flux is what line co and mgo those are flux right and uh, what is the gang sio2 and al203 right very good it is very simple answer so blast furnace slag will contain cao mgo sio2 al203 it is okay so what are these all are oxides yes or no you are getting my point all are oxides or not cao mgo yes. sio2 yes, and they they are in molten state they are in a complete mixture so its slag is a solution of oxides that is a simple definition slag is nothing but it is a solution of oxides or predominantly it is a solution of oxides and also contains some sulfides maybe some calcium sulfide magnesium sulfides will because you remember i told some iron ore contains sulfur and some uh, some coke also contains sulfur so that sulfur will react with lime to give you calcium sulfide or magnesium sulfides or if you if you have added manganese ore mno so it also form manganese sulfide mns so slag is a solution of oxides and some amount of sulfides will be there some amount of phosphide also there because if you remember i told iron ore also contains some amount of phosphorus in form of p2o5 so if some p2o5 will remain it will become p2o5 that's fine but but in blast furnace slag it p2o5 is not there basically because all the phosphorus p2o5 will get reduced to phosphorus and it will join the metallic phase right okay fine what is uh, if question will be there what is the other name of this molten metal called pig iron right the molten iron which is formed in the blast furnace is called pig iron right and what is the composition of pig iron can you tell me rough composition at least pig iron is a impure iron or pure iron impure impure iron impure iron very good impure iron that's why we are converting this pig iron to steel later that is a refining process or purification of pig iron right so what is the composition of pig iron pig iron as i told if you remember basically contains lot of carbon 3.5 to 4.3 basically weight percent is carbon right so pig iron contains carbon 3.5 to 4.3 basically and it also contains some sulfur it also contains some phosphorus it also contains some manganese if you have provided manganese ore right and silicon will be there because some sio2 also get reduced to si that will join the metallic phase right so composition of pig iron is carbon silicon phosphorus sulfur and manganese it is okay now yes sir yes sir you understood how carbon is coming because molten metal is forming that is reacting with carbon right some you are providing carbon so that get dissolved this this central column of coke also get dissolved in the hot metal to give you more carbon percentage right because these are unburnt coke that also gets soluble in the hot metal to give you more carbon right and uh, how sulfur is coming can anyone tell me what is the source of sulfur in hot metal so from coke and coal coke and coal very good the coke and coal you are providing anybody remember from where we are providing coal from top or from to here top so from the top from to here not top coal is always provided from, from the two year coal is coke is always provided from the top you have to remember that coal is provided for combustion and to reduce the amount of coke that is the helpfulness of the coal you can say because we never use coal coal basically contains lot of ash lot of sulfur phosphorus and lot of uh, moisture volatile matter and coal is not so hard it is fragile you remember no that's why we never prefer to add coal from the top we we just provide coal for combustion to provide some heat energy to provide some carbon monoxide for that right so very less amount of coal is provided to the two year reason that is called pc so pulverized coal injection pci pci pulverized coal injection hmm. you have to remember that concept 
So, uh, okay, fine. You understood the source of sulfur is coke and coal. Uh, very good. Then, what is the source of uh, phosphorus? Also, coal and iron ore. You can write. Mm. And what is the source of manganese? If you are providing manganese to remove sul sulfur in form of manganese sulfide, then that is the source of manganese. So, this is the composition of slag. And okay, fine. Uh, can anyone tell me now what is this part? Top part above the throat. Charging system. This is charging system. Very good. Which kind of charging system? Bell system. Bell system. Very good. Bell system. But uh, do you think nowadays we are using bell system or bell less talk? Bell less system. Very good. Very good. Nowadays we are using bell less system. You you might get a question from this. What is the difference between bell system and bell less system? Or what is the difference between bell and uh, uh, rotating tube system or you can say bell stop right so bell stop system is called rotating tube that rotates 360 degree and uniformly dis distribute the button inside the furnace can can you tell me what is the limitation of this bell system anybody remember sir the larger bell only opens when the smaller uh, bell is uh, fully fulled no 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 my question is why we are not using bell kind of system nowadays? Why we are why we have moved to bell less stop or rotating tube system? What may be the reason? So it is a time. Okay, let me tell you quickly. The thing is, if you are using this kind of system, bell system, the distribution of burden will be not uniform inside the furnace, right? Burden distribution is very important to provide you higher efficiency, right? So that means. The reduction will be not proper. Heat transfer will be not proper if the burden distribution is non-uniform. You need the burden distribution should be uniform. Burden means you remember what is the burden I told? Burden means the raw materials which you are providing from the top, the coke and the iron ore. Or that is iron ore means sinter, pellets, lumps, and the coke, huh? Or the limestones. That should be distributed uniformly. But if you're using this kind of system, distribution will be non-uniform. If there will be non-uniform distribution of burden, then heat transfer will be non-uniform as well as the reduction will be non-uniform. Somewhere more reduction, somewhere less reduction. Somewhere more heat transfer, somewhere less heat transfer. So what will happen? Efficiency will be poor. Efficiency of the furnace will go down. You people are getting my point or not? Yes, sir. So actually, if you carefully look, there is a formation of V profile and M profile. You have to remember that is very interesting. If you if you use this kind of system, you have V profile and M profile. I am not sure I, uh, the PPT is present here or not. I am not sure about that. I, I may show you that V and M profile. Okay, I will explain it later. Huh? Anyways, so rotating tube. Why we are using rotating tube? Because rotating tube rotates 360 degree inside the furnace and uniformly distribute the burden everywhere. There will be no formation of V profile and M profile. That is also called contours. Yeah. V contour, M contour. Hmm. Anyways, uh, we'll move to next quickly. Uh, this is uh, this is very important now. If you sit for any interview, and your favorite subject is iron making, or uh, they want fish, uh, they want answers from you regarding iron making, they will ask to draw the blast furnace, show different temperature inside the furnace. And so what are the reactions happening inside the furnace? That means you have to draw everything and you have to write the temperature profile and you have to write the, all the reactions happening inside the furnace. So this kind of question is basically asked in the interview as well as in the end semester, obviously, or mid semester. So you remember what are, what are the things we charge from the top? You remember iron ore bearing burden, iron ore, sinter, pellets, coke, and flux. So these are the temperature profile. Can anybody remember? That means this temperature profile is showing you what? The temperature inside the furnace is not same everywhere, right? Yes or no? Just see. Here the temperature is 300. Here the temperature is 700. Here the temperature is 1000. Here the temperature is 1200. Here 1900, 1500, like that. Huh. But uh, <laughs> there is certain confusion here. huh? This this temperature is not exactly true, but it's fine anyways. So you can see the temperature is not 
same everywhere huh? so what what i can say from here if you go down the temperature is increasing 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 and it become actually maximum here huh? it is some wrong data huh? anyways in front of the two year the temperature is maximum always this reason hmm. but it is showing wrong value here huh? you should avoid these values anyways in front of the two year the temperature is maximum can you tell me why the temperature is maximum in front of two year because of what hot blast because of hot blast and combustion combustion is happening now hot blast temperature is only 900 degree to 1000 degree centigrade so in front of the two year the temperature reaches to maximum temperature that is 1900 to 2000 degree centigrade you have to remember question may be like this at what reason of the blast furnace the temperature is maximum so what is the answer at the two year reason huh. because two year reason hot blast is coming that is having a temperature of 1000 degree centigrade for example and it is reacting with coke to give you temperature up to 2000 degree centigrade or 1900 degree centigrade hmm. so if you go down below the two year what will happen to the temperature it will increase or decrease it will again decrease hmm. so i can say if you start from here to downward the temperature increases and it reaches maximum here and again it go down hmm. like this And what are the reactions happening here? Here are the reactions you can see. So what are the reactions happens? One reaction is you can see Fe2O3 react with carbon monoxide to give you Fe3O4, right? Then Fe3O4 react with carbon monoxide to give you FeO. Then carbon react with CO to give you CO. Huh. So can you tell me first reaction and second reaction? Mm -hmm. So this is direct or indirect reaction? Direct reduction or indirect reduction? Indirect. It's two. First indirect, one, very good. Why? Because carbon indirect. monoxide is taking part. Because these two are solid and this is gas. That's why. Right? And what is this kind of reaction? C plus CO2 gives rise to 2CO. What is the reaction called? Combustion reaction. C plus CO2, just have a look. Carbon is reacting with carbon dioxide to give you carbon monoxide. Solution loss. Solution loss. Solution, Solution loss. loss. Sometimes people ask why this reaction is called solution loss. Why? Because you are losing carbon in form of carbon monoxide. Why? Why you are losing? Can anyone tell me? Because carbon is a solid, right? If carbon will stay, it can easily react with iron ore, right? But if it will form carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide is a gas phase. So it will move upward quickly, very at a very fast rate, it will move upward. So all the carbon monoxide monoxide may not utilized, right? In the reduction process. Some of the carbon monoxide will come out of the furnace. That is a loss, yes or no? You understood my point? Shall I repeat? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Solution loss means you are losing carbon in form of a solution. What is the solution? Carbon monoxide is the solution. Carbon monoxide is moving upward at a very high velocity and it will interact with the iron oxide. But all the carbon monoxide cannot be utilized because it is moving at a very fast rate. It will come out from the furnace. So you are losing some carbon in form of carbon monoxide. So it is a solution loss. You are losing carbon. That is a loss. Okay. It is okay now up to this? Yes, sir. Then, then what is the reaction? This is called what kind of reaction? CaCO3 becomes CaO plus yes, CO2. Decomposition, yes. Huh, decomposition, but technically called calcination, no? Yes, sir. This yes, is sir. called calcination reaction, right? Then, then uh, further, what is the reaction? FeO react with carbon monoxide to give you Fe plus CO2. So I told you the sequence, you remember, no? Fe2O3 becomes Fe3O4. Fe3O4 becomes FeO. Okay, fine. Uh, again, you, solution loss reaction is happening. And uh -huh. what is this reaction? Can you tell me FeO react with carbon to give you Fe plus CO? What is this reaction? This is direct or indirect? Direct reduction. Direct, direct reduction. reduction. Very good. This is direct. Second, SiO2 plus carbon give you Si plus CO. This is direct or indirect? Direct. Direct. Direct, very good. And this one, MnO plus C? 
direct direct very good and p2o5 plus c this is direct direct right because you can see this these are solids this carbon coke is solid and these are also all solids so solid is reacting with solid so this is direct reduction so you have to remember from f this from this this part up to this feo2 p2o5 all these reactions are endothermic in nature you have to write all these reactions are endothermic in nature uh, in nature what do what do you mean by endothermic reaction can you tell me quickly uh, we need to give heat for the reaction no technically endothermic means what so they don't uh, the reaction in which reaction in which we need to provide energy for the reaction yeah 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 that heat that's fine absorbed. but what what is the meaning of endothermic heat is absorbed the heat heat will get consumed heat will get consumed due to that reaction heat is getting consumed the temperature is going down right yes or no and in the top reactions fe2o3 c plus co2 this all these reactions are basically exothermic in reaction but i think fe3o4 plus co it is, it is an endothermic but this reaction is exothermic uh, calcination reaction is endothermic you remember huh. cao3 gives rise to cao plus co2 is endothermic calcination reaction is endothermic fe3o4 react with carbon monoxide is also endothermic and all the direct reductions are endothermic in nature right others are exothermic so that's why in blast furnace we need to maintain a ratio between indirect and direct or direct is to indirect hmm. if you if i'm talking about direct is to indirect then that will be 40 is to 60 you have to remember direct reaction is to indirect reaction should be balanced that is 40 is to 60 can you tell me why why this is this need to be maintained i told you just before all direct reductions are endothermic process and calcination reaction is also endothermic so that the heat released by the exothermic reaction can be absorbed by the endothermic reaction yeah yeah very good excellent because you can see if if blast furnace in the blast furnace more endothermic reaction will happen what will happen the the slag will get solidified the liquid metal will get solidified right but we don't want that we want to keep slag and hot metal in molten state and also we need energy heat energy for reduction and melting also yes or no you understood my point so that's why 60% indirect reduction should be happen, which release the heat. And 40% direct reduction should happen, which is endothermic in nature. It is okay now? I think you people have understood up to this. Hmm. Yes, and other reactions, what is happening? Moisture removal is happening. And yeah, this just have a look. This reaction, sulfur plus oxygen gives to S plus CO. Okay, fine. Carbon plus oxygen give to CO. Okay, fine. H2O plus carbon give you H2 plus CO. So you have to remember if somebody will ask to write the reaction where it is happening, uh, then I will tell you this. From the here, FeO plus C2, P2O5 plus C. All these reactions happen at the Bosch region. Why, can anyone tell me why this direct reduction happens in the Bosch region basically? Because Bosch region have higher temperature because these reactions are endothermic in nature. Endothermic reaction means the reaction where heat energy is consumed. That means it needs more amount of heat need to be the Bosch region basically. And can you tell me where this reaction will happen? C plus O2 gives rise to 2CO. This happens at the two year basically. Yeah. And this reaction will happen in the stack. This reaction will happen in the stack. This reaction will happen in the stack, right? Why this reaction will happen in the stack? Can anyone tell me? First, uh, first reaction and third reaction. Solution loss reaction and this reaction will happen in the stack. Why? Because they release a lot of heat. It is exothermic in nature. And the stack reason have lower amount of heat energy or lower temperature is there. That's why. Hmm. Exothermic reaction means it will evolve heat. So it don't require any heat. If
of gas right it is written am i audible or hello yes sir am i audible yes sir yes sir the the gas which is coming out from the top is called top gas it is also called waste gas flue gas or top gas many names are there basically blast furnace gas is called top gas so what is top gas top gas is nothing but the gas which is coming from the or blast furnace gas right some carbon monoxide will remain unutilized so it will remain as carbon monoxide obviously carbon dioxide is coming out due to what due to carbon deposition reaction due to reduction reactions you can see co2 co2 here present right so co plus co2 then some nitrogen will be there okay can you tell me where nitrogen is coming in the top gas what is the source of nitrogen hot air blast yeah very good hot air blast because hot air also contains nitrogen if you if you check the composition of the normal air maximum amount of nitrogen is present how much can you tell me what is the volume percentage of nitrogen in the normal air 78% 70 to 72% 70 72 yeah i was 70% basically huh? so 70 like, uh, 70 77 so that nitrogen nitrogen is an inert gas or not right inert gas so nitrogen is a inert gas so it will not never take part in the reduction process so that nitrogen will remain as nitrogen fine so nitrogen comes out from the top and uh, and some hydrogen will be there some water molecule will be there and some dust dust will be there right do you remember some flue dust some if some iron ore will become break down that will come out as a flue dust so flue dust will be there so this is the composition of the top gas right so major composition is the carbon monoxide do you remember do, do you have any idea what is the use of top gas the main use of top gas is the because of presence of carbon monoxide because carbon monoxide have some calorific value if you burn carbon monoxide it will release lot of heat energy so this top gas is first cleaned by using dust catcher scrubber and esp electrostatic precipitator right after cleaning this cleaning this top gas this top gas either fed into the furnace from the top to provide you high top pressure or it is given to the hot blast stove where combustion will happen and it will release lot of amount of heat it is okay so this is the function of top gas and you understood why top gas is important because of presence of carbon monoxide you have to remember carbon monoxide always form due to incomplete combustion of carbon that means still some amount of carbon is present in the carbon monoxide if you burn carbon monoxide it will provide you lot of amount of heat but if you burn carbon dioxide it will never give you any any heat because carbon dioxide is formed due to complete combustion okay is it okay up to this fine yes sir so these are the reactions i have written here you can see removal of moisture from the raw material this happens at the top of the furnace the moment you charge the furnace into the charge the raw material into the furnace then what happens reduction of iron oxide by carbon monoxide which is indirect reduction then gasification of carbon gasification of carbon by co2 means solution loss reaction because carbon is becoming a gas co carbon monoxide then calcination reaction will happen if you have provided calcium carbonate then it will become calcium oxide then uh, reduction of feo by carbon that is direct reduction which happens in the bosch region and reduction reduction of some other oxide present in the ore that is sio2 al2o3 basically al2o3 never take part in the reaction can you tell me uh, why al2o3 do not undergo redu reduction like sio2 and mno sir it's reducing temperature is around uh, 20 100 degree celsius with carbon So yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because, because in the aluminium diagram, if you see, aluminium oxide lies at the bottom of the aluminium diagram. Huh? Aluminium oxide is very stable. It needs a very high temperature for reduction. So that's why aluminium oxide will never take part in the reduction process. The alumina present in the iron ore will go to the slag, right? But the silica which is present in the iron ore will move to some slag in form of SiO two, and some silicon will go into the metallic phase. That means pig iron will contain silicon because of reduction. then combustion of coke by coke and coal in front of two year this is the 
reaction at the two year reason. So these are the reactions happening in the blast furnace. Right? Any questions up to this? If you have, you can ask me quickly. Now, uh, what are the products of the blast furnace? What are the product? Can you tell me what are the products we'll get? You know the raw materials. You know the top gas. What are the other products? Top gas is a byproduct, huh? You have to remember. What are the major product of the blast furnace? One is hot, hot metal, metal and slag. That is pig iron. Very good. And molten slag. Very good. Then and top then gas. Top gas. Right. Top gas is a byproduct. You have to remember. Uh, hot metal is the main product. Molten slag is the byproduct. Huh? You have to remember, right? I have written here. You can you can check this one. What is what is the use of slag? What is the use of hot metal? What is the use of top gas? Everything I have written here. You can see. Top gas after cleaning, having uh, having fuel value since it contains carbon monoxide gas used for creating the air, driving turbines also. You can also drive uh, drive turbines to produce electricity by using top gas. Right? Then slag slag is used as fertilizers and making cement also. You can make cement out of slag. Hmm. Why it contains lime? That's why it contains silica, lime. That's why. Huh? And hot metal. Hot metal, you can understood. We, we send hot metal to SMS. SMS is nothing but steel making shop. Then we, where we convert the hot metal into steel, right? Or you can cast it. These are the use of this. Size of the furnace. This is not so important. You can have a look. Blast furnace refractive lining is also important. You have to remember what are the refractive lining we are using basically. Hmm. Anybody remember what are the refractive linings we are using? These are the refractive linings used. Aluminum, sil aluminum silicate, fire clay, low duty fire clay, huh? 40 to 45 percent aluminum content, high duty fire clay, 60 percent aluminum content, carbon blocks. So these are the major refractive linings you have to remember, huh? So you have to remember in the stack reason we are using fire clay refractive lining or aluminum silicate. Aluminum silicate means Al2O3 will be there and SiO2 will be there. Aluminum silicate, alumina into silica, right? And in the uh, carbon blocks are used in the hearth basically. In the Bosch region also we are using aluminum silicate. Now you have to remember. Uh, and some some furnace they are using silicon carbide also in the Bosch region, right? And there might be a question why we are using carbon blocks in the hearth? Why we are not using aluminum silicate? Any idea? Let me see who can answer this. Why carbon blocks are used in the hearth as a refractive lining, not aluminum silicate? The hint I can give you is one hint I can give you is you are having uh, slag so in the hearth. Because silica That's can it. react with the presence of uh, carbon monoxide. Because, no, 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 no. no. Because okay. Activity of carbon in the hearth lining is equal to the activity of carbon in molten metal. So that's why there will be no, no reaction. No, no, no. That is not the answer. The thing is high thermal conductivity. One one answer is high thermal. Very good. High thermal conductivity. In the hearth reason, we don't want any kind of reactions to happen basically. We don't want high temperature. Right? We, there is no need of high temperature. Everything has already happened. That is now the slag and metal need to be stored in the molten state. That's all we need. We don't want any kind of very serious reactions happening, right? Which do not require any kind of heat. So if if the temperature of the hearth will be higher, what will happen? It will degrade the refractory lining at a fast rate, right? If if the refractory lining will get degraded, then you have to shut down the furnace. Then you need then there will be a huge loss to the manufacturer. Obviously, if the furnace will get shut down. There is a huge loss because there will be no production at all. So that is a loss. Per day, you are losing crore of money, you can say. Right. So what, what is the answer? Carbon blocks, carbon have high thermal conductivity. So carbon have high thermal conductivity. That's why it will dissipate the heat to outside the atmosphere. So the temperature of the furnace will remain low. Basically, in the hearth reason, the temperature will remain low due to dissipation of heat by this carbon block. 
because carbon block has high thermal conductivity that is one of the answer and other answer is carbon do not react with hot metal and slag right carbon is unreacted you can say so corrosion resistance is good you can say corrosion resistance of carbon towards hot metal and slag is good and also if you are using aluminum silicate refractory instead of carbon block aluminum silicate refractory or acidic refractory it may react with some lime present in the slag because slag also contain lime right so it can react with lime because this are acidic refractory lining and lime is a basic so they may react right that is another answer it is okay i think up to this yes sir okay i'll, I'll stop here huh? okay last question what 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 do you mean by low duty fire clay and high duty fire clay what is the meaning of dutiness you have studied refractory i think no fuel furnace and refractory no what sir what is the meaning of dutiness huh? dutiness means what dutiness means also called refractoriness huh? what is what is the meaning of that refractoriness or dutiness so to withstand high temperature ha huh, that means up to up to how much temperature it, it will not melt or it will not fuse right if the refractory have high dutiness or high refractiveness it will not melt or fuse at high temperature but if if it is low duty or it has very low duty or low refractiveness it will easily melt at high temperature right so dutiness depends upon what depends upon the alumina content you have to remember because the refractiveness become just suppose if silica remain higher then dutiness will go down why because alumina have very high melting point 2047 degree centigrade but silica have a melting point of 1700 nearly hmm. it is okay i think you people have understood up to this so can you tell me uh, then in the bosch region if you are using alumina silicate refractory then which kind of refractory you are going to use low duty high duty or medium duty high duty obviously high duty because bosch region have very high temperature right Like sixteen hundred degree centigrade, seventeen hundred degree centigrade will be there in the Bosch region. That's why, or fifteen hundred like that. Hmm. Acha, what is the temperature of top gas? Can you tell me top gas temperature? It is two hundred degree centigrade. You have to remember that. Huh? The temperature of the top gas is two hundred degree centigrade. Fine. Okay. Any questions? Otherwise, otherwise I will leave. Huh? Sir, on gas or on blast operator? Okay. On gas, on blast. Okay. Uh, if I'll get some time, I will take class at during evening hours. Huh? I will explain that on gas and on blast. 